Just as the number seven was symbolic of the ethereal forms of the twin souls, so is this next card in the sequence, which is card number eight, Strength. The Strength card is symbolic of the immortal soul, and it is showing that the immortality of the soul comes through not allowing the physical aspects of ourselves, symbolized by the lion, to dominate our true self. So we must use our internal fortitude and strength of spirit to conquer our bondage to the physical. When we have conquered our mental enslavement to the physical plane, our true power is found. This power comes from the understanding of who we really are. For when we know inherently that we are ethereal and immortal, we have no fear of death. But this immortality does not come to those who are not worthy of it. This is why the soul is shown in a white gown. This is symbolic of the pure intent in one's heart and also shows our connection to our divinity. The soul is shown gently closing the mouth of the lion, but the lion is also showing subservience. This is because he knows the soul is immortal. And we see this relayed in Daniel and the lions as we have discussed in the previous videos. The lions did not kill Daniel for his painful tests brought with it the knowledge of himself. And upon that understanding, he no longer feared death. The lions, then sensing Daniel did not fear death, saw no reason to kill him. However, Daniel's knowledge of himself and his immortality were only granted through his open heart and belief in himself. The number eight on the strength card is showing our immortality is connected to the heart chakra as we see that the number eight equates to the heart chakra on the ancient Egyptian number key. The soul on the strength card is shown in white and the infinity symbol of immortality above the head. This is symbolic of immortality that is found through the pure heart. We can also see the number eight connected to immortality in the Chinese mythology of the eight immortals. The eight immortals are a group of legendary immortals, each with a power that can be transferred to a power tool that can bestow life or destroy evil. The six flowers and the wreath show the connection to the physical form and the wreath is symbolic in Greek mythology for victory, strength and wisdom. Again, this is showing that it's through these attributes of the aligned soul that one gains immortality and the power to consciously unshackle from the material ties that bind the soul to the physical world. When we look at the wreath on the head of the soul, we see three roses symbolic for the trinity within the soul. The rose is symbolically connected to a number of goddesses, including Isis, whose rose appears in the metamorphosis of Apuleius, the only Latin novel to survive in its entirety, where she is said to be the sweet rose of reason and virtue. The mountain in the background is symbolic for the challenges the soul will face. These challenges will require inner strength and fortitude to move beyond. Card number 17, the star, is also equated to this card as one and seven equate to eight. The star is symbolic of the immortality of the ethereal soul and we see the potential of the soul is also shown in this card with the ether being poured upon the earthly plane illuminating the divine within each soul. On this card the ethereal soul is symbolized by the seven white stars and the immortality of the soul is relating to the eight pointed star. If we look to the Fibonacci sequence, we see the strength card equates to the golden mean section of 21. And on the ancient Egyptian number key, this number equates to the solar plexus navel chakra, as well as Isis and the moon. And we can also see this connection to Isis and the moon shown in one of her other aspects, which is represented by the goddess Hathor, who is symbolic for the creation forces of the moon and also childbirth. The number 21 is symbolic for the twin souls and the divine represented in the ethereal. This is showing they are not yet reunited as the trinity. However, we see the potential of this reunification of the twin souls and the divine represented when we deduce the number 21 to a 3 which gives us the trinity. 
As stated before, however, the number 21 is represented at this chakra, showing us symbolically that the twin souls and God consciousness have not yet reunited. If we times 3 by 7, this equates to 21. So now we have the three ethereal forms of the Trinity also symbolized in this number 2. And 21 is also used seven times in the Bible. 21 is also the sum of the first six natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, making it a triangular number. The number 6 being symbolic of the manifesting of God consciousness and the mental into the material. 21 grams was also said to be the weight of the soul, according to Dr. Duncan McDougall, an early 20th century physician who measured the mass lost by a human body when the soul departed the physical body upon death. Given that this energy point related to 21 is where the soul enters the physical container, we are now able to understand the significance of Dr. McDougall's findings. It is also interesting to note that Russian scientist Konstantin Korotikov used an advanced technique of Kurlian photography and captured the life force leaving the body while photographing a person at the moment of his death with a bioelectric camera. It shows in blue the life force of the person leaving the body gradually. According to Korotikov, it is the navel and head that are the first to lose their life force, which would be the soul, and the groin and the heart are the last areas. So we also see in Kartikov's findings that it is the navel and head area where the life force or soul areas are located. As we now understand, it is the ethereal energy point at the heart chakra where the upper and lower forces merge to create the material from the conscious projection of the creator. It is the ethereal energy point of the navel chakra, however, where our soul enters into our physical container. As mentioned in previous videos, according to Edgar Cayce, the soul was located near the stomach in an area he called the Leiden. And on the tomb of Neb Neteru, the great high priest of ancient Egypt, it is inscribed with the verse, the West seeks to hide from him who follows his heart. The heart is a god, the stomach is its shrine. And within the Taoist tradition, the psoas muscle, located in the stomach area, is spoken of as the seat or muscle of the soul and surrounds the lower dantine, one of three furnaces of energy within the ethereal body. In chapter 8, verse 21 of the Gospel of Mary, it relays this about the soul. The soul answered and said, What binds me has been slain, and what turns me about has been overcome. Once again we see that it is when we overcome the chains that bind us to the physical, we will understand our true self and the key to our immortality. There is much conjecture amongst many researchers regarding the location of the soul. Some say it is the heart, the Kabbalists say it is contained within the blood along the spine, and yet others state it resides at the third eye, pineal gland. In truth all are correct, for as the ancient Egyptians knew, there was more than one part to our soul, and that there were different elements to our ethereal form. The conscious element of our soul that directs our will and expresses the individual essence of who we are is located at the third eye area and is called the Ba. This is the point where our ethereal self takes in information visually and consciously and also where information is consciously processed before it is expressed. The aspect of the soul that is located in the stomach area equates to the Ka and is where we process environmental information we cannot visually access, hence the term gut feeling. The ancient Egyptians said this was the part of the soul which distinguished the difference between a living and a dead person, with death occurring when the Ka left the body. Meskhenet was the goddess of the force responsible for the Ka entering into the body and she was paired with the god Shai who was known as the god of fate. It was said that he determined the span of each man's life and was present at the judgment of the soul when the heart is weighed. 
The ka part of the soul was often represented symbolically as a second image or the double of the king. This double was representing his ethereal form. Between the ba and the ka aspects of the soul is the ethereal heart. This is the energy point of the ethereal body that emotionally processes and responds to information from both the ka and ba. In ancient Egypt, the soul and ethereal body were symbolized by the bird and wings. And we also see a connection to the bird and the soul in this verse from the Quran. The body is the cage of the bird of soul, which is imprisoned in it. Death is its escape from the cage, its freedom. Now if we add the sum of all the previous numbers in the Fibonacci sequence together, we get the number 54, which can also be deduced to a 9 as 5 and 4 equal 9. So let us first look at what we can find in connection to the number 54. Firstly, we see a direct connection to the number 54 and the moon in relation to a particular cycle between the moon and the sun that was measured by the ancient Greeks who called this cycle of 54 years a exiligmos, which translates to turning of the wheel. And within this cycle are three saros cycles of eclipses of the sun and moon. So we also see the number three is significant within this 54 year cycle and is also connected to the navel chakra on the ancient Egyptian number key. Now if we add the number 20 connected to the heart on the ancient Egyptian number key and the number 54 together, we get 74, which deduces to an 11. This equates to the justice card and once again shows that it is the heart and the alignment of one's soul that allows each gate to be transcended. The Torah is also separated into 54 parts and there is a 54 day rosary novena connected to Mary or Our Lady of Pompeii as she is also known. And there is a Greek verse relating to the rosary that says, Theotokos, God bearing maid, rejoice, grace filled Mary, the Lord with thee, praised thou among women and praised thy fruit of thy womb because it was the saviour of our souls that thou bearest. This verse is relaying that the fruit of the womb is not just physical, but also the soul. And it is also relating to the female creation energy responsible for birthing both the male and female souls onto the physical plane. This is why in times of higher consciousness, when we have a full understanding of ourselves and our roles of gender, we can honour each other for the complementary attributes and traits we have within each of us and we exist harmoniously benefiting from this understanding. However, unfortunately, there is an agenda to make us feel we need to be more like the opposite gender to find success as a spiritual being. This is purposely designed to keep us unaware of who we really are and in competition. Many have been led to believe gender is equated to left-right brain hemispheres and again, this is completely unsupported in any ancient texts. And the latest findings from a study done by researcher Jeff Anderson and his colleagues of the University of Utah studied 1,000 participants and none showed a particular side of the brain was being used more than the other regardless of gender. The truth is we are different for a reason and this is because we complement each other on every level, physically, spiritually and also mentally. These complementary differences within the gender make up the perfection of the whole. God did not make us flawed and in need of achieving some impossible task to achieve perfection. Perfection is achieved by honouring ourselves completely for who we are and also honouring and respecting this in each other. Psalm 143.8 Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee.